to this edi this week's edition of Inter University Debate. Inter University Debate is brought to you by Center for Constitutional Governance and Civic Space TV, and it airs on Civic TV on YouTube every Thursday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. I'm your moderator for Inter University Debates. My name is Lakia Jedamasi, a man advocate, a lecturer, and a tax consultant. In this week, we are hosting the Uganda Matters University in Kozi. I would like to start by congratulating Uganda Matters University in Kozi for making it to the quarterfinals. Uh, congratulations, and I and I wish you all the best in the rest of the rounds that you have. So we have several other universities that also made it to the to the quarterfinals. Uh, others we already hosted them um, for their internal debates as they prepare for the inter university. Uh, the quarterfinal stage. We have Bakere University, Harare University, Islamic University in Uganda, Uganda Pentecostal University, Bakere University Business School, Kampala International University, uh, Mbara University of Science and Technology. We have Nkumba University, Uganda Christian University, Cavendish University, and Busitema University. Um, so those are some of the universities alongside Uganda Matters University in Kosi, but in a heated inter-university debate qualified the finals. Our topic for today is, have Ugandans attained gender equality? What are the opportunities and challenges to gender equality in Uganda? It is a very, very interesting uh, topic. As we know, several provisions of our laws provide for gender equality, and uh, some instances actually provide for opportunities for the, the female gender for women, especially when we look at issues of affirmative action um, and, and several other laws that provide for um, gender equality and issues of gender to make sure that um, the different gender, they are at the same level and opportunities are granted to both gender, contrary to what existed um, when we look at history and as well as in culture. So today we look at gender equality uh, years down the road after fighting so many years for gender equality. We ask how ourselves, have Ugandans attained that gender equality? What are the opportunities and challenges gender equality in Uganda. And you, the students of Uganda Matters University in Kosi are going to debate this topic today. Without wasting time, uh, let me introduce uh, my panelists for today. So let me start with the first panelist, and that is Semuyaba Arthur. Arthur, you're welcome to introduce yourself. Yes, good afternoon once again. My name is Semuyaba Arthur. Uh, student at Uganda Matters University in Kozi, also the president of Uganda Matters University Law Society, and I am one of the panelists on this today's debate. Thank you Should so I... much. Thank you. Thank you. We are glad to have you for the Ita University debate. Being a law student, we are glad that you'll be able to discuss with us, especially the legal matters concerning gender equality. Let me go to the second um, panelist for today. And that is uh, Ms. Namudu Sylvia Chisache. Sylvia, you're welcome to introduce yourself. Uh, good afternoon. Happy to be here. My name is Namudu Sylvia Chisache. I'm in year three, Tell of Laws. Um, I'm the speaker for the Uganda Matters University Club. I'm happy to be part of the panelists for this debate. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvia. We are glad to have you uh, for this debate. Our third panelist for today is a gentleman that is uh, Mr. Ronald Nadohera. So, Ronald, you're welcome to introduce yourself. Yes, well, good afternoon to you once again. It's a pleasure and privilege to be before this forum. Yes, I'm by the names of Natwe Ronald pursuing a Bachelor of Laws and serving currently as the Vice President of Ghana Matters University Law Society. It's a pleasure for me to be, to be here this afternoon. Thank you so much, Ronald, and we are happy to have you for the 
today's debate. Our fourth panelist uh, for today's debate is Nalukake Rachel Ruth. Uh, Ruth will be joining us in a bit. Uh, when she joins us, we will ask her to introduce herself and then join the debate. So those are the panelists that we have for today for the inter-university debate. Our panelists are from Uganda Matters University in Kozi. Now it's time for our panelists to give us their opening statements on this topic. Um, the topic is, have Ugandans attained gender equality? What are the opportunities and challenges for gender equality in Uganda? So in the opening statements, we expect to get all the definitions of the key terms and the introduction to today's topic. The first panelist to give us uh, an introduction is going to be Mr. Arthur. So Arthur, you're welcome to give us your opening statement. Yes, um, in today's uh, topic, we need to understand Okay, today's topic goes that have Ugandans attained gender equality? What are the opportunities and the challenges for gender equality? First off, we need to understand what is gender. According to Uganda Bureau of Statistics the ministry, and, and the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, in their report that was published in March 2019, um, they say that gender refers to the difference between women and, women and men, boys and girls within the same household and within and within and between cultures that are socially, uh, culturally and culturally constructed uh, to change that change over a time. Then we see that um, these differences have reflected in the roles, responsibilities, access to resources, um, constraints, opportunities, needs, perceptions, uh, views, and very many others, which are conceptualized by both uh, women and men in their interdependence relationships. I will see that um, they, went, they went ahead and they also defined gender equality, whereby they say that um, these are the equal valuings made by society in their similarities and differences of men and women, boys and girls, and their roles that they play in form of economic, social, cultural, political development in their perspective. Now, in today's debate, we need to understand that um, um, gender equality has, has been evolving from over a time here in Uganda. Okay, Arthur, thank you for that opening statement. You will pick right from there when we get back. So let me move to the second panelist for today, and that is Miss Sylvia Namuto. So Sylvia, you're welcome to give us your opening statement. Um, as my colleague has mentioned, um, the definition of gender. Sorry. As my colleague has mentioned, the definition of gender as the difference between women and men, boys and girls in the same household, I'd love to, to bring into light gender equality, where the UNICEF says gender equality means that women and men, girls and boys, enjoy the same rights, resources, opportunities, and protections. This is a state of equal ease of access to resource and opportunities regardless of gender, including economic participation and decision making. So how does gender equality comes in? We wouldn't be have the topic of gender equality if there was no gender inequality in the beginning. Back then, there was gender inequality where it was patriarchy most and most women had to be subordinate to their husband. Women had to do all the work for their husbands. They were like subjects to the men. Though, however, this gender inequality has brought up some schools of thought like feminism, masculinism, which are all fighting for equality. Feminists fighting for the equality of women and masculinis masculinism fighting for the equality of, of women. Um, for the case of Uganda, the Uganda constitution allows for gender equality, which is one of the opportunities we have as a country that our constitution, which is the, um, the law of the land in Article 21, confirms an equal status of all citizens of Uganda. Whereas Article 23, I mean, sorry, Article 33 describes the right and status of women and ensures women's right to an equal treatment with men. We see that the constitution of our country, which is the highest law of the land, 
is telling us that women have their rights, women have rights the same as men, and we are also all equal. We are also equal under the law. So I think our constitution gives us an opportunity for gender equality. And also we've seen women be, being given higher political offices like the vice president, the prime minister, the, the, the speaker of parliament. We have women MPs. So I think Uganda, there is an opportunity for gender equality. However much we are not where we want to be, but I believe we are on our way. But of course there are challenges that are there. For example, we're facing a lot of bias um, where we, we are hearing of narratives that feminists or women that believe in gender equality don't get married because they, they don't know how to handle a man, which I think is not good. I believe human beings are not supposed to be handled. And also I think when we talk of gender equality, we are benching so much on the girl child. However, we are not trying to groom the boy child to fit the standards of an empowered woman. I, I, I think because we have many women empowerment organizations and this is a challenge, they are leaving out the boys. Be yet I think we need to groom these boys to fit or to suit the, the empowered women. That's one of the challenges. Um, also another challenge is, is we have is that um, we have different forms of violence, like sexual violence, domestic violence, uh, where women are regarded as weak. Some, some, some men view women as weak because of their physique, though we shouldn't confuse the gender roles nature gives us and the gender roles that patriarchy put there. The gender roles that nature gives us are like giving birth, that is a gender role for women. But the gender role for women is not in washing clothes, keeping the house clean. That is the gender role that the patriarchy system put there. And I believe if we are fighting um, gender inequalities, we should consider that gender roles that nature gives us and the gender roles that the patriarchy system put up for us. And uh, as, as I said that we are leaving so much the boy child behind, as we are seeing there are some men that are also raped, but because we are, we are lifting the girl child and leaving the boys behind. The boys do not come up to talk that they were raped. However, uh, there are some organizations for men that have come up to talk about sexual assault in men. As we have different organizations, we have organizations like Social Transformation Forum for Women in Democracy. These organizations have come up to help the girls, but we need these organizations to also include the boys to some extent to be groomed, to fit the, the girls we are trying to empower. Then there is also um, a gap, financial gap, more so in some sectors like construction and technology, where we see that women that try so hard to be- Yes, carry on. Yes, oh, Sylvia, we can hear you. Well, like women in construction and technology, have been left out. We have many women that strive to be good architectures, good engineers, good mechanics, but the society views them differently. And even when they start working, they are paid less. Though we, we are having organizations to come up for them, like women in construction, they are trying so much to guide them, to help them, but still they are undermined in especially the construction and technology sector. So I think we need to bridge that, that gap that gender inequality gap in the construction and technology sector because it is pulling women's financial status down. So thank you very much. That, that's what I had for now. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Uh, that was quite a detailed um, introduction. So we will go into that discussion at a, late, a later stage. Let me bring Ronald into the discussion to also give us his opening statements before we go into the debate. So, Ronald, you're welcome. Yes, thank you. The topic of this, of this debate states that have Ugandans attained the gender equality and that what are opportunities and challenges for gender equality in Uganda? So, I'll start off by giving a definition of gender equality, relying on in making reference to gender issues in Uganda. That was a report by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Titled the analysis of gender-based violence, asset ownership, and 
employment. So that report goes on to state that gender equality is the equal valuing by society of similarities and differences of men and women, boys and girls, and roles they play from an economic, social, and cultural political development perspective. So gender equality from that definition in and of itself, we can see that, that we can see that gender equality evolves around economic, social, cultural, and political development. So as a, as a state or as a nation, as Uganda, have we attained the opportunities and what challenges are we facing in order to champion the, the gender equality scheme that is there? So we can start off from the re legal regime that we have since the parameters of this topic center around Uganda. We will start by the legal framework, the legal framework that is our constitution. Like uh, my fellow panelists, Namudu Slivia stated that Article 33 and Article 23, those encompass, encompass gender equality. There are articles that make reference to gender, gender equality. Now, Article 33, sub Article 2 states that the state shall provide the facilities, of, facilities and opportunities necessary to enhance welfare of women and to enable the aim to realize the, their full potential and advancement. So facilities and opportunities, these are provided mainly by the state and that is the state of Uganda and that is by the government. So the government has to provide opportunities so that this gender equality is fully, uh, fully realized. So as a state that still poses the questions, that still poses the question, what are the opportunities and challenges for gender equality in Uganda? And we're going to venture into that in a short while. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ronald, for that introductory statement. Now, let's uh, go into the debate, and I would like to start with Arthur. So, Arthur, let's start from the beginning on gender equality. I would like you to take us uh, back in history. Where did we start from, and where are we at right now as a country in terms of gender equality? Yes, um, good afternoon. Hope I'm audible now. Well, I, if we are to start about from the history, we shall start to we shall talk about the pre-colonial Uganda, where we see that uh, during the pre-colonial times, men controlled everything, and women were co were considered were considered as property. Uh, by then, we see that this was a patriarchal society, whereby women were considered as chattels. For example, in Bunyoro and in, in and among the Itesots, we see that women were inherited as chattels of the deceased. Uh, they could inherit these women, and they were passed on to their brothers, to the brother of the deceased. Then from there, we see that in other societies like Uganda during the pre-colonial times, um, women were given a. Uh, were given that were given the power to uh, to influence various activities. For example, they engaged themselves in politics. Uh, they they engaged themselves in uh, the political sphere of the society. For example, in the Baganda, we see that the ma the mom of the Kaka, who was called uh, Namasoli, um, she she had uh, her chiefs that she could order and they could do various administrative works. We see that uh, women by then could influence both uh, private and public activities, especially the elderly women. Now from there, I'll take you now to the post-colonial Uganda, whereby in the 20th century, women lost their influence it lost, the, lost their influence and power when patriarchy and colonialism changed the gender relations. We see that um, the British colonial administrators and Ugandan men took control over land directly and cultivated the cash crops, which was not the same in the past during, during the pre-colonial Uganda. We see that in, during the pre-colonial Uganda, it's with the women who had the direct uh, control over the land, whereby they could go to the gardens and do the, uh, the cultivating themselves. But to the coming of the colonialists, um, now it was men who, who engaged themselves in various uh, um, commercialized farming, whereby now they started growing cash crops and they aimed at looking for money. Now we see that uh, the the British colonial administrators uh, decided to 
to pressurize the men to produce various cash crops. And we see that women now we are, we are disempowered and the, all, all the instruments that, um, that involved in farming now were transferred to men because they were the heads of the family and they had to provide. We see that now the introduction of the British rules, the, the introduction of the, um, the British style of education still, um, it favored the boys rather than the girls. Now from there, we see that uh, Uganda, after Uganda getting independence, that is 1962, um, government um, put up various policies that were to empower the women. Uh, we see that the government of Uganda um, decided to recognize um, various uh, opportunities for women, whereby we, we decided to, to recognize various opportunities for women and boys, for, uh, boys and girls. We see that uh, they did not only exclude uh, the, the, the women, but they decided to make them inclusive in various activities. We see that uh, gender responsive, they introduced the gender responsive legal policies that were there to help um, the women especially. We see that um, gender issues encompassed, were, were encompassed under the 2006 Uganda National Gender Policy, which initiated the policies that have registered some progress in, the, in reducing gender inequalities and vulnerabilities in Uganda. We see that, uh, that the government tr tried to put up various policies. For example, we see the Uganda Women Labor Program. We see um, the Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program. We see the Youth Livelihoods Program. And we also see the, the social assistance grant for the empowerment of women. Uh, we see that government later introduced the legal framework. Now this is, is now the, um, the NRM regime, whereby the president decided to put up a constitution that would indulge all Ugandans to participate in different social, economic, and political activities. For example, we shall talk of Article 40. It talks about the economic rights of every Ugandan, and this um, uh, and this uh, encompasses both um, the male and the female. We see that uh, the government recognizes the rights of women and and men, whereby they could uh, choose to offer labor, and for which in return they had to be paid. And also, it went ahead under this article that one can withdraw from the labor they offer. It means that now they give them the liberty to do what they want, and if at all they are not interested, they can withdraw. Then we see that in Article Article 34 that talks about um, the rights of children, it encompasses both boys and girls. It does not discriminate, whereby uh, uh, both ch uh, ch both both guys, uh, bo bo boys and girls, can be can be protected, whereby they protect their interests. For example, if at all you're going to adopt the child, they will not segregate that this is a female child or this is a male child. They will, they will follow up the rights and they will try to uplift this child regardless of their sex. Then we shall go ahead to Article 33 that talks about uh, the rights of women, whereby our government still uh, uplifts the women and provides for various facilities and opportunities whereby it's government to implement them. We have seen of recent that uh, government has gone further to sensitize about the masses, about the importance of sensitizing uh, the communities about gender inequalities, whereby some societies have been, some societies, some cultures have been regarded as abusive. For example, FGM in Northern Uganda, whereby um, FGM has been strongly prohibited and has been implemented whereby government has arrested those who abuse the rights of women by taking them under this um, cruel punishment, that is FGM. Then uh, here in Uganda, uh, people have tried to take their children to schools. The culture, the culture that says that uh, a girl is, ca cannot be educated uh, has been washed away. Now both uh, girls and boys go to school. Furthermore, we see that um, Article 32, the government puts up um, affirmative action whereby uh, the girl child is empowered both in the education system, whereby we see that uh, girls are given an extra point of 1.5 that all they are um, joining after completing their secondary school. When they are publishing the results, they would add uh, 1.5 on their results. Then uh, we see that uh, 
government has also in, in put up education systems that do not discriminate uh, boys and girls. We see that they try to put up everything that will teach the girl child and also the boy child without uh, um, creating differences between them, which um, <clears throat> whereby they do not show that this is greater than the other gender. So we see that government putting up educational structures to educate both sexes, it has been able to, to prevent gender inequalities. Then uh, we see that Article 31 that talks about rights to a family. It, sh it shows that both women and men have a right to a family, whereby uh, as, as long as a woman is of age and a man is also of age, they can go ahead to choose partners of their own. One can no longer be forced to marry any other person which, uh, which they do not like. Uh, we see that in the previous, uh, in our history, back to the pre-colonial times, we see that uh, women in Uganda and all other tribes, they would uh, ma arrange marriages for these girls. And these girls did not, have, uh, did not have the power to choose their partners. So, but we see that right now in the current regime, under our constitution of 1995, under Article, um, 30, uh, and under Article 31, that provides for rights to a family, it shows that a woman has a right to choose their partner. They have a right to have children and to live in a happy life. So we see that from the pre-colonial times up to now, we see that there has been a uh, uh, the, there has been a, a change that has been positive, whereby now the status of women and girls has been uplifted to match that of the boys. With that, thank you. Quite elaborate, and uh, we're able to get from your discussion, um, where we came from, from history to now, where we are now in terms of gender equality, as well as uh, you also feature the legal framework and the policy framework that governs gender equality in Uganda right now. Thank you so much. As earlier on, um, I mentioned uh, that Ruth will be joining us. So Ruth, you're welcome to the forum. Kindly uh, introduce yourself by giving us your full names, the course that you're doing, and if there is any other uh, responsibility that you hold at the university. Ruth, you're welcome to introduce yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Naluka Kereto Ruth. Yeah, I, I'm doing journalism and mass communication. I'm the Deputy General Secretary uh, at the Guild Council. Okay, thank you, Ruth. Um, we will let you settle in and uh, we'll join the discussion at a later time. Let me proceed to the next panelist, and that is Sylvia. So, Sylvia, having listened to the his historical background of gender equality in Uganda and then its current legal framework and policy framework. My question to you is, what are the opportunities under gender equality in Uganda right now? Thank you very much. Uh, the law itself gives us a lot of opportunities for gender equality. I believe the opportunities for gender equality we have are the provisions of the law or the provisions of the society that allows for gender equality. Um, we've seen an increase in the number of girls that join higher institutions of learning. And that has, uh, from 2021, it is 18.5% um, of the girls that join higher institutions of learning, which wasn't the case before and also the 1.5 point that is added to girls that are joining the public higher institutions of learning. We've also seen the constitution that provides women or girls with an equal opportunity with their, with, with their male counterparts. We've seen article 21 that gives all of us, men and women, boys and girls, equality before the law and in the society and also article 33 that describes the rights of women uh, we've also seen a number of organizations that have tried and are still trying to advocate for gender equality like girls not brides a forum for women in democracy a lot of organizations had dream just like my child all those organizations that the organizations, for example, that she laws that deals with female, young female law students, 
So I think all those are trying so hard to, br to bridge the gap of inequality. So I think there are opportunities for gender equality in the country. We've also seen different political offices being put there for women, for women to, to indulge in politics. As I mentioned earlier, the vice president, a right honorable Anita Anit among the speaker of parliament. And they've, they've, all be, they've all been given opportunities to indulge in gender equality. We've also seen, I don't want us to bench so much, so much on gender equality on only women, because I believe gender equality is for both, for both sexes, both female and male. We've also seen male rape victims come up to talk about how they've suffered through different organizations like Men of Hope Refugees Association, which helps the men that have suffered sexual assault and sexual violence to speak up, to not be biased by society that says men are supposed to sulk everything up. I think when we look at gender equality, it should be, we should be equal, men and women, not we shouldn't only bench on women on women and leave out the, the men. So um in a bid to to in a bid to bridge to bridge the financial gap between women and men, different the government is emphasizing different circles. We see the circles in our villages, the savings groups mainly are for women. Women are there and they save. So I think this, had, this has helped so much women financially, um, socially. This has helped them not to be subordinates to men because they have something they bring to the table, which was in the case back then, where they were only waiting for their husbands to provide for their families. I think that's all. Oh, and also uh, politically, uh, there is an increase in the number of women MPs in parliament. It has increased to 34.9% according to the United Nations Women Report. So I think those are, those are the opportunities we have for gender equality in Uganda that allow women to indulge in things that were initially thought are for men. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Sylvia, for giving us the different opportunities that um, uh, that exist in gender equality. So let me bring uh, Ronald into the discussion. And Ronald, I would like you to pick from where Sylvia has talked, and it's something that she actually had hinted on earlier, which is on the different misconceptions that exist around um, gender equality, and I would like you to bring some of those misconceptions and address them. So um, that is my question to you. What are the different misconceptions that have come up and it's, it's around gender equality and how do you address those misconceptions? Yes, well, thank you. The different misconceptions that have arisen out of this gender equality or that are misconstrued by the population or the public. Remember, Uganda, Uganda that is in Africa, Africa is has been predominantly a patriarchal, a patriarchal society, and of course Uganda. But one of the things that the the government or the constitution, because I'm going to use the constitution as a legal framework, as a vehicle that has tried to to bridge out these misconceptions. So these misconceptions, first of all, when we look back in 2006, the government, the current government, that is the NRM government, put up the, the Uganda National Gender Policy. And the Uganda National Gender Policy that was set up in 2006 was primarily, primarily given or obliged to eliminate these misconceptions. And how these misconceptions were eliminated were that one of the, of the objectives of this policy was to attain gender equality of women, and that was done. To, that was that was brought to light by establishing the Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program. So this Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program was primarily based to support women on projects that they would that would that were seen to be these projects 
uh, initially were seen to be for men. So if a, wo a woman had an entrepreneurship project or business that was primarily seen by society to be for men, because those are the stereotypes that are within society, that a certain business or a certain, a certain profession is for men. But now, when this, these opportunities were brought before by the government, they were primarily based to support these women and, and bring them to light. So the Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program gave opportunity in form of soft loans and after that, we saw the youth, the youth livelihood programs. The youth livelihood programs were also uh, gave, a, gave a kickstart to the youth to start uh, viable businesses and to eliminate the misconceptions that are within society. Because society has misconceptions, you, and these misconceptions could be that women now cannot become engineers, or, but how, now how are they eliminating that? We have the higher education, a higher education financing board that gives loans to able, able or, or ladies or gentlemen that are willing to pursue a certain course and they are not restricting. They will not restrict, they will not restrict you to a certain course or, but as long as you're able and you're, you're willing to take up that course, you're, you're, you're supported financially at a later time, you get to pay back the loan. So the misconceptions that have been in society have been eliminated in that way, in that the government has engaged the population through the opportunities and putting on a vehicle, bringing forth a vehicle that will ably eliminate these misconceptions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ronald, for bringing out the different misconceptions and how we can address them. Let me finally get to Rachel. So, Rachel, I would like you to handle these discussions from the angle of the challenges. What are some of the challenges that exist in the fight for gender equality? Uh, okay, thank you so much. So, it, the, some of the challenges that exist in this, uh, uh, as Uganda is trying to attain gender equality, one is, uh, there is a adult suffrage. So there is adult suffrage in that, despite that, and a, a point in case where women are given a chance or an opportunity to also be in a, to also be in a place like now that women the, in every district we see that women are given the opportunity to be um, every district there's a. Uh, an opportunity given to a woman MP. Yes, but how, how, like, what are the challenges? There is adult suffrage in that they are given the opportunity to, to be the women MP, so they limit themselves to that alone. They do not, most of them do not go for the upper, uh, for the upper position, yet they would actually also do it. So that is, um, that is adult suffrage. Then there is there is also a challenge. Uh, uh, there is there is also another challenge of culture. So as we are trying to uh, attain uh, equality, there is a there is that uh, a challenge of culture whereby uh, a case in point in Boganda, a woman is expected to come back and do housework so despite the fact that we are creating the um the despite the fact that we are bringing equality a woman still has to come back from work despite her working for a whole day and getting so tired they still have to work then uh, as we are attaining uh equality another another challenge that is there still in culture uh, a case in point is for our friends in Ankole. We see that Bahima still right now, though it was there before, we see that they 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 still stage marriages for their for their uh, for their for their different daughters to be there. Then religion, as as we are trying to attain. Uh, equality, we see that religion is not allowing this to happen. How? In the Catholic, uh, uh, in the Catholic sector, a woman is not allowed to become a priest. 
So how are we actually attaining equality with that in, in, in place? Then uh, also decision-making in families. Uh, th there is decision-making where it is still a man that has to make the final decision. Then uh, again, in, in culture, a case in point in, is in, uh, in, in national, uh, in Northern Uganda, sorry, in Northern Uganda, a woman is not allowed to attain or a woman like, to have land. It's, it's not allowed. Uh, though some other, some other cultures have tried to adjust and work it out. Yeah, that, that is it. That is what I can give. Okay, thank you, uh, Ruth, for bringing out uh, some of the challenges that uh, are faced during the fight for gender equality. So, yeah, so let us move to something that you can choose to debate for or against. And that is the question of have Ugandans attained gender equality? I will start the debate from Arthur, who is discussion. So Arthur, the question has been posed, and you can choose to debate for that question. Have you done that to gender equality? Over to you, Arthur. Well, <clears throat> have Ugandans attained gender equality? That depends on uh, two sides. One, that to a larger extent, uh, Ugandans have attained gender equality. First off, we have looked at the legal framework that has provided for the rights of women to indulge in various economic um, economic rights, social rights, and uh, also we see that uh, in the previous uh, in, in the previous times, starting from the, the from the history, we have seen that in the pre-colonial times, uh, Ugandans uh, Ugandans did not have that uh, gender equality, but over a time, it has been promoted. Now, we have to first go back and we talk about uh, our legal framework, starting from the constitution, as I had said earlier, that um, Article 40 talks about economic rights, that women have the right to engage in any, uh, in any work they wish to do. So it means now they are not limited from, from doing any particular type of job, unlike in the past where they were limited to only household work. Now we shall proceed to see that uh, also, girls have been allowed to attain education, which has not been there in the past. So we see that there has been a progress from the past, whereby we see that uh, in the 1960s, we see that during those times, most of the of the education sector could favor the the the, the boys rather than the girls, and we see that most of the Makerere graduates by then were mostly the men, unlike the women. So now we see that over a time various um, parents have been advised by the government to take their children to school. And we have seen that this has enabled the girl child to be empowered academically, whereby now they can um, indulge in various activities, the white collar jobs. Uh, we shall also see that uh, to a large extent, um, society has learned to believe in girls that they can cause a change. For example, women women these days can participate in various political uh, positions. We've seen that uh, they have been uplifted by the government, whereby uh, they are given women women uh, positions, whereby we, we shall have women MPs in government, and they can represent their fellow women and present their grievances. We see that now uh, women from the past, we see that uh, they, they were not given that chance to choose their marriage partners. But as, as I, I had told you earlier, that now women right now, they can choose to have partners of their choice. So we see that um, over time, women have, have de their status has developed. However, we cannot only hinge this only to women, but also the government has gone ahead to protect both sexes. For example, also the boys have been protected by the law itself. Um, we shall see that article, article 33, that talks about uh, talks about uh, the, the the right to provide equal facilities for both men and women. It provides for both genders. It does not segregate. And we also see that article 34, 
it uh, provides for both um, the boys and the girls to be taken care of in the best interest of the child. And government has gone ahead to implement this, whereby in the courts of law, um, when one is to adopt a child, irrespective of whether male or a boy, they will have to first undergo various procedures. And this is aimed to protect both uh, the child and and also to pro, to to see whether they are handing over this child to the rightful parents. Then uh, uh, we see that uh, we, we, we see that the affirmative action that has been put up by government has been here to uh, empower the women to be to not be segregated. So, in conclusion, I see that uh, to a large extent, um, Ugandans have attained. They have attained the gender equality. However, to a small extent, they have registered some failures, whereby um, the gender equality has registered uh, various failures. For example, uh, today we see that there, are, there has been uh, a lot of family breakups, and this has created a lot of single women. I mean, I mean, a lot of single mothers, whereby these days it is the mothers that take care of their children rather than the parents, the, the, their fathers. Why? Because their fathers think that they are now being threatened by this gender equality. We see also that gender equality has, uh, to a small extent, failed. Why? Because right now it has led to, uh, it, it it has led to uh, the introduction of extreme extremists, whereby we have uh, feminists who are so extreme and they have uh, fought against the social order. For example, they encourage the women not to be submissive to their husbands, even though yes, equality is there, but they ought to be. Are submissive and uh, they ought to respect their husbands. And with that, I think um, to a large extent, uh, we have attained the gender equality in Uganda. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur, for opening that discussion for us. Let me shift that discussion to Sylvia. So Sylvia, Arthur says to a larger extent, we have achieved gender equality as a county in Uganda. What do you think? Over to you. Thank you very much. Um, I, um, I won't give it a, a large or a smaller extent, but we are moving forward. What I'm thinking is that we are moving forward. Because right now what we are doing, we are still breaking the bias. We are still breaking because um, gender equality and gender inequalities are more mental than actually physical. So we are still breaking the bias that women are supposed to be submissive. I don't think that any human being should be submissive. I want to bring this in a view that there should be only respect between both parties, not one being a subject to another. Then what I've also seen, in also breaking the bias, we've seen more men appreciating women, appreciating the leadership skills of women, entrepreneurship skills of women, We've seen the guild presidents of Makere University, Uganda Christian University, Uganda, Uganda Christian University, Mokono. They are women, which means they are women in societies filled with men. That means we are on our way. We are breaking the bias. We are telling men that women can do even greater things that you actually think of. Women can do great things, not thinking of their physique, not thinking of how they are weak physically. But let's look at how they are strong mentally. However much like I said in the, my opening, my opening remarks that, that we have gender roles that nature gives us and gender roles that the patriarchal system put up. How is it? How, how can we? How can we uplift the gender roles that nature gave us as we are removing the genders that patriarchy brings in? In the construction sector, we have laws that protect men, the health and safety acts in construction, especially construction, and gives women privilege because of what nature gives to them that has made them take equal to men. Uh, women are given breastfeeding areas at workplaces, women are given sanitary towels at workplaces. Things that would be women uncomfortable, but these things are brought up by nature. So we as a society need to come and help women break up these things so that they can fit comfortably in a world that most women are in. However, to some extent, yes, we, we are still breaking the bias, we are 
doing all these things for gender equality. But Sylvia, Sylvia, if you could just use your audio, because we are not able to hear you properly, just use the audio. If you could remove the video and just use the audio so that we are able to hear you properly. Okay, you can now proceed. Okay, thank you. Oh. Okay, I will, I will, as I had stated the different, um, how we are into gender equality these days. I don't know if you heard me well. I said we are still breaking that society bias on gender equality. We are on, we're on the road, we are doing it, though we are not yet where we want to be. For example, we are seeing good presidents, women good presidents of Makere University, Uganda Christian University, Mokono. These ones show that the world is starting, Uganda specifically, is starting to believe in women, to see that women can even do greater things. Women in finance, women in construction, women in entrepreneurship, women can even do greater things. Uh, we, we are fighting to, we have some men that still think that because women are weak physically, they are weak mentally, which is not the case. Physically, we might be weaker than men, but that is natural. But there is this thing that the world creates for us women that we become mentally strong. Um, in the construction, in a bid to bridge the gap, um, financial gap or working environment between men and women, um, different, the Health and Safety Act was put up. And in this, it has different things that favor women because what women go through naturally is not the same thing as what men go through naturally. Women need to breastfeed their children, however much they are working at construction areas or in different farms, farms of work. Uh, women need sanitary towels because they are battling their natural order with what society has put up for them. But however much you've seen all the opportunities of gender equality in Uganda, however much we've seen all, that, all these laws that protect women, that preserve women, that are fighting for gender equality, the different organizations, there is still something that is coming up, something that is lacking, more so with bias, we are still breaking the bias, but there is something that is coming up uh, that is fighting equality, that is dominance. We've seen the different schools of thought that have come up with equality, that is feminism and masculism. These schools of thought are trying to break away from feminism. I mean, from gender equality because they are promoting dominance. Yet it is dominance that we are fighting for. You find feminists that don't want to even produce boys. We find masculines that don't want to even produce girls. So it is, it is starting to shift from fighting for gender equality to fighting for dominance. And that is, that is, that is where we are now. We've seen some, some feminists that don't want to associate with men. I believe if we could, we as Ugandans, we have our culture and I don't want us to be competing with other countries like America in gender equality because America is more than 200 years old. We are just 60 years old. So if we could take this step by step, we start by breaking the bias. Then after breaking the bias, we uh, put favorable working conditions for women rather than not overputting the feminist principles that are so strong on Ugandans that are just still embracing the idea of gender equality. So I think um, Uganda has not yet attained gender equality. It's just on the way and it is not yet even 50%. We are still on the first step. The first step, which is we are still just breaking the bias we are not yet far from that. It is just breaking the bias and we should take this step by step because um, if we don't take this step by step, it will create dominance. The women will want to become dominant, the men will also want to become dominant, which will take us back to where we came from and we all don't want to go back there. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Sylvia, for your well-detailed submission. Uh, Sylvia says, no, we haven't yet achieved that. She gave her reasons. And according to her, we haven't even achieved 
Um, and then we have Arthur who says, yes, to a larger extent, we have been able to achieve gender equality. Let me push the man to Ronald. So Ronald, you're welcome to this um, discussion on whether Uganda as a country has achieved gender equality. So you have the floor, give us your submission. Yes, thank you. Yes, as a, as a country, if I'm to answer that question, we have to make reference to the economic, social, cultural, and political, political ground that we have in our country. And answering that question is that, as a country, we've achieved that, in that economically, if we are to, to see how things are being run here in Uganda economically, take a look at the programs that have been put forth, forth by the government, the Youth Livelihood Program, the MUGA Program. Those programs are not limited to, to either gender, that is male or female. Those programs are, are for all. So it's either male or female, they, are, they can engage in, in participating in those programs, in attaining loans, soft loans from those programs. So they are not limited to either. Then socially, socially, how how we we've achieved in that the social standing in our society is not limited to 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 either to either gender that is male or female. Socially, we are we've achieved this. Then culturally, culturally, how we've achieved this is that under our constitution, I'm going to make reference to the legal framework now because culturally, I think that is that is Article Two. Sub, sub article two that outlaws customs that are inconsistent with, with our constitution, that those are, are null and void uh, to the extent of their inconsistency. In that, now cultures, some cultures like FGM, uh, cultures, someone made reference to the Wahima that are still, uh, that are still practicing certain cultures that are, that are gender, that bring that bridge between the gender of the male and female. Such cultures have been outlawed by our constitution. In fact, if one, if it is brought to the attention of, of the courts here in Uganda, that would be prosecuted. So culturally, we've achieved this in that the constitution that gives the legal mandate has provides for the legal framework that, that stops someone or stops a culture or a group of people from participating in things that are inconsistent with the constitution, that culture, the cultural. Uh, cultural bit of it, then politically, politically, how we've achieved this, uh, you, we, we have live examples here in Uganda. We have ladies that are, uh, that have vied for member of parliament seats that have, we have a prime minister who is a lady, we have, and men, men who are members of parliament. So there is that equal, equal balance, there is that gender equality now. It's not that the politics here in Uganda are restricted to one, to either gender that is male or female. So we see that balance and the, the ground is leveled. It's not that one gender has been sidelined and the other has been uplifted and the other is given the opportunity. Either gender is given an equal opportunity. Take a look at the, the elections that we, we just completed, the, the, the presidential election elections. The four, uh, those elections, each, each one of us, each Ugandan was allowed to participate in them. I, I didn't come across uh, an advert or something saying that no, ladies or men are restricted from uh, getting forms from, from the electoral commission. No, it was open, it was an open thing and politically we've achieved this. So as, and as a state, we've achieved, I believe, that we've achieved, we've achieved gender equality. Thank you. Okay, I can see um, the, the debate is taking different dimensions. We have what Aldo says, as of today, we have achieved. So not least, let us listen to Ruth. So Ruth, you're welcome to this discussion and specifically on the issue of whether as a country we have achieved gender equality. You have the floor. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so the question is, has Uganda attained gender equality? And uh, 
my answer is we have not attained the equality that we need, but to some extent, we have attained as far as equality is concerned. Uh, why do I say so? According to, sorry, uh, why, why do I say so? According to the sustainable goal, num number five, that says uh, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. So, uh, and uh, achieve gender equality and empower women and girls. We have seen this happen in our country. That is why I say that to some extent, we Uganda has attained gender equality. We we have seen uh, different places, political places, majorly in 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 favor for women alone. A case in point is of women MPs. So it's a, a thing for only ladies, no gentleman can go for it, which was not a case before. So that shows that uh, we have reached the equality to some extent. Then uh, there is also uh, an opportunity for every young girl to be represented in the parliament. So that is another, um, another opportunity that we see that has actually uh, what has actually also brought uh, the, a bit of equality in it. Then uh, there is the National Women Council, which is from national level to village level. We have also seen uh, this shows that we have attained equality because it's not only a national level, but it's also at a different level whereby at, at a local level where someone stopped in form for, they can still also go and attain or be on a leadership scale. Then uh, uh, a case in point, the, the, Mioga, the Mioga organization, we see that 30 to 35% of the money of the Mioga are allocated strictly to women. We see that uh, I see and I find this as uh, an inequality because these are the things that are actually going to help them uh, also start up their different businesses, uh, as as one of the mem as one of the members said, so that we can actually break the bias. Then uh, there is also a case in point of uh, where we see girls added a point uh, at, at at form six level. So. Th that that shows that shows that we have attained equality. That the fact that these things were not there before, all these things I've mentioned, most of them were not there before. That shows that we have attained the equality. To we have attained the equality that we need. But to some extent, we have um, uh, we have not attained the equality that we need. But to some extent, we have attained as far as equality is, is concerned. So let me bring a case in point why I say we have not attained the equality that we need. Uh, a case in point is uh, of the different, uh, our culture, the, where, where we see women uh, are supposed to still, women in Buganda are supposed to still kneel down for gentlemen. Uh, what happens when a woman, uh, uh, it, it's vice versa. So culture, which is actually very hard to break, uh, shows that we have not attained gender equality. Then uh, also a case in point is where, uh, in, in Northern Uganda, where a woman is not allowed to own land, like I said before, why shouldn't a woman own land? So that has strained and showed that we are not yet there, though to, we have attained to a little ex to some extent, but we are not yet there according to uh, as far as equality is concerned. Because according to the sustainable goal, of uh, sustainable goal number five, as I told you, it says to achieve gender equality.
equality and empower all women and girls gender gender equality that like majorly or to some more to to girls but why do the the women in uh, in northern uganda why can't they actually own land then uh we see a case in point of domestic violence 95 percent women are beaten up and society takes it as okay which is not right um it it, it it is not right so when a woman comes out and they also do the vice they also do the reverse they also beat the woman the man in uh back it is it is it it is looked at as a very uh a, a very bad thing how can a woman do it yes it's a bad thing but that shows that we have not reached there uh, 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 according to to uh, we have not attained that that gender equality uh, then economically we see like in financial employment we see that many ceos are men why is that so there is then there are different stereotypes where a, a woman manager cannot work more than a man manager so all those have have shown that yes we have uh, the, the the first points have given show that yes we we have these points that I've just given, given show that we have not attained that gender equality. But the first point, the first points I gave show that uh, that uh, we have not gained the gender equality as yet. Uh, that we need, that we really need to make the the the, the country firm. And uh, but to some extent, we have attained some equality according to uh, the, the, the sustainable goal number five. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth, for your submission. So we have Ruth and uh, Sylvia who say, no, we haven't yet reached there. And Ronald and Arthur say, yes. So we have two people on, the, on one side and the other two on the other side. I would like to pose a question and I'll start with, um, I'll, I'll pose two questions. One to the group that says, um, yes, we have achieved, and then one to the other group that says, no, we haven't yet achieved uh, gender equality. I'll start with the group that says we have not yet achieved gender equality, and that is uh, Ruth and uh, Sylvia. And my question to you is, what more should we do as a country so that we can fully attain gender equality in this country? I'll start with Sylvia. Thank you very much. Please pardon, please pardon. Uh, Sylvia, my question to you is, what more should we do as a country in order to fully achieve gender equality? Okay, thank you very much. I think first of all, like I've been saying on this whole debate, number one thing is break the bias. And how do we break the, the bias towards women? Let the organizations that come up to empower men, I mean, sorry, that come up to empower women, the organizations that come out to help the girl child, let those same organizations have some part in them that also calls on men. We need organizations for men too. Like I said, how are we empowering girls when we are not talking with boys on how to fit in with an empowered girl or an empowered woman? We need more organizations of boys. We need to show boys that to be a man doesn't mean to beat a woman. To be a man doesn't mean to be controlling. For one to be a good man, they don't need for a woman to kneel for them. We need to create more organizations for the boys, the same as we are creating the organizations for girls that will help us in breaking the bias. It will also come back to the families, how we groom our children. We've seen in many families, 
it's girls who cook, then the boys go and get water or firewood in the village setting. Um, concerning the family, it, I think it starts from us and from where we grew up from. If you've grown up from a family where you all do every kind of activity, a, a woman can fetch water, a girl can fetch water, a boy can cook. I think that will also be a way of breaking the bias. I think the number one thing here is breaking the bias. And also, let's stop making laws, policies that cannot be reliable. Let's stop making laws and policies that only bench so much to the Western world. We should, consider, we should consider that our countries are just getting civilized. We are not yet to the civilization that we need. So we need to go step by step. After breaking the bias, what next? After doing this, some things, um, I think they should come step by step. We shouldn't do exactly what Americans are doing for gender equality. We should have our own form of wanting gender equality. Then also changing the mindset of women. We should teach our girls that respecting a man doesn't come from submission. Because you submit to a man, it doesn't mean that you're respecting them. And also men should know that respect doesn't come from women kneeling for them. Then another way we can, we can improve on the gender equality is making sure that our laws are working. Yes, we have uh, the constitution that says this, the Health and Safety Act that talks so much about women in construction. But if you take some time and go to construction sites, you'll bear me witness that none of it is working. Why? Because the, the laws are not enforced. The laws are not working. The different policies we have, few of them are working. And even those ones that are working, are only working for those ones that are in position to get money. If your husband beats you or if your husband sexually abuses you, there is no way you're going to report a case when you don't have money. It comes back to the system. Let's, let's put our system in order, our law enforcement systems in order for gender equality to be where we want it to be. Then also amending some laws. We've seen in the Penal Code Act, um, where if your husband rapes you, he can only pay 200 shillings. Can we rely on those laws really right now? How, how shall we have gender equality when if my husband rapes me, he's only required to pay 200 shillings and how many of those laws are working? We've also seen uh, the spokesperson of police, um, in Mr. Enanga, saying that adultery is not a crime in this country, however much the laws talk about it. So what can the citizens do? Obviously, if your spouse cheats on you, you're just going to stay there and keep quiet because the police spokesperson himself came out and said it is not a case to be reported. So if we could amend the laws, especially that law of rape, rape in marriage, sexual assault, and also we don't have um, rape for men, We've seen many men go through harassment. We've seen most men being raped, but under the penal code, we only have rape for women. We don't have rape, things that cater for men who are raped. And it is regarded a shame in society for a man to be raped, but they actually get raped and also get emotionally disturbed. Like I said, if you want gender equality, we should consider both sexes, the men and the women. We don't want one sex to dominate over the other. So for us to attain gender equality, like I've, I've explained, break the bias, um, have working laws, laws that are really working, have working policies. Yes, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Sylvia, for that very brilliant submission. Let me move to uh, Ruth on the same question. So Ruth, what do we need to do as a country to attain gender equality? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think what as a country we can do to attain gender equality? Well, in, in my submission, I said we are, we are not there, but what can we do to attain more? of it. Uh, this is what we, we can do. How about we imp 
input the 2022 campaign theme of breaking the bias, as uh, my other colleague has been saying, of the Women's Day, uh, which says, imagine a gender, imagine a gender equal world. Oh, yes. OK. Sorry. OK. Uh, so, 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 so uh, as I was saying, uh, to 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 sorry. Uh, how about we adopt that theme of the 2022 women's day of breaking the bias as my colleague has said where we imagine uh, a gender a gender equal world where yes uh, women are respected as women yes but then men are also respected as men but it's a, it's equal what a man can do a woman can do and vice versa. Then uh, a world, a world free of bias. Uh, a case in point is, yes, they have put uh, positions for women, like, like uh, women MPs. Uh, they have put positions for 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 men, for women, like women MP and. Uh, so they are put positions for women, that is women MP. But how come, uh, how about these women uh, are, are, are pushed to actually go for the bigger post? So by doing so, because there is a bias, they, they, there is that bit of bias thinking that they stay at that, despite that, yes, they have, they have put for them those particular positions, but why 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 is it at that why why do they stay at that position yet they can actually go for the next level also uh, then also a world where stereotype a world free of stereotypes uh stereotypes is uh, a case in point where i've showed you that uh, uh there 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 are different things where they say that women uh men are more good managers but that is a stereotype a lady can also do it and actually do it better than a man so how about uganda adopts that so that uh we 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 not only uh break the bias but also as as we are breaking the bias we are also breaking the stereotypes uh to show that yes a woman can also be a good manager then uh in be a world where difference is valued. Yes, you are a woman, but why can't you do this? And also celebrated the fact that you are a woman, we do respect you and uh, and and, and uh, bring you together. So like, uh, uh, according to that theme, we can uh, for, forge and uh, and bring not only women's equality, but uh, as we are bringing it together, we also uh, join in, uh, also join in men and show that difference is valued, but let's break the bias, let's break the stereotypes, let's break, break the discriminations and all that. Then the, the other point is of uh, adult suffrage, whereby, uh, yeah, adult suffrage, uh, in that case in point where uh, uh, they, they have been, yes, given, given the opportunity, uh, yes, they have been given that opportunity of being women MPs, but how about they go to the next level? Then uh, also in, in culture, like in, in terms of religion, how about Uganda? Uh, from how about Uganda also allows uh, women, especially now in the Catholic society, to also become priests? Then how how about uh, also uh, women also in the religion, uh, in the Muslim religion, becoming leaders because they are put down, and that shows that we have not reached that level of equality, that despite the fact that we are pushing it. Then uh, uh, the last point is of a family. Uh, a, a case in point is men are men are seen as they are, they are the, the ones like they are, they are, they are the ones supposed to 
provide for everything. Uh, men are seen as a, a type that has to, you have to be ready to pay rent, to pay for everything that has to be in a home. And a woman's money is a woman's money. It does not uh, proceed that. How about we bring campaigns in Uganda that can show that, yes, you are a woman, but let's value the fact that, yes, we are diff of different uh, genders, but how about a woman also bringing half and a man also bringing half and bringing it together to care for our family? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ruth. And that, that was yeah. my submission. Thank you so much, uh, Ruth and Sylvia, on your submission, um, answering the question of what more can we do in order to fully attain uh, gender equality as a country. And that question was asked to you because in your submission earlier, you said, uh, no, we have not yet achieved gender equality. Now, let me move to the other camp, and that is the camp of Ronald and Arthur, who say, yes, we have achieved uh, gender equality. Arthur says to a larger extent. So let me start with Arthur. So Arthur, my question to you is, uh, if we take, okay, um, my question is now to Arthur and uh, Arthur and Ronald. Your camp, uh, that side, your side says that yes, we have achieved um, gender equality. My question to you is: right now, hypothetically, if we take away the opportunities that have been given to women under the different roles, and we also take away gender equality. Do you think the women can stand at equal footing with men? Yes. Yes. yes, I believe women would still stand on an equal footing with the, with the men. Why? Because it is the women that de have demanded for the rights that have uh, brought up the, the gender inequality. So I believe that women are quite intelligent and they can influence ideas in men and therefore they can still be on the same equal footing like the men. We need to highlight that uh, women are actually intelligent and they are capable of doing different activities. They can lead, they can innovate various, uh, various technologies. Uh, we see that uh, even if gender equality is not there, they can choose to uplift themselves uh, because they, are, they, they have the intelligence to combat um, difficulties. They can think uh, beyond the box and bring about solutions in the society. They may not need gender equality. Um, first off, uh, we need to know that uh, very many things are practical and women can also indulge in them. Definitely, we cannot say that the, the men can do uh, some things that the women cannot do. And then the other thing is that uh, gender equality is not only limited to the women, but it looks at both sexes, boys and girls, women and men. So I believe that uh, I, I believe that still women without gender equality, they can still stand on an equal footing. First of all, they do have the same physical feature, all, almost similar physical features, and they do have the intelligence to uh, think about beyond the box and innovate various uh, skills and uh, technologies. So I can, we, we can't say that women cannot stand on the same equal footing with the men. Thank you, Arthur. Let me hear from Ronald. Yes, well, thank you. Yeah, you, are, you asked that if the opportunities that are now there, if they are taken away, can women have an equal, understand, uh, have an equal standing with men? Yes, in my opinion, I believe women will still have an equal standing with men in that now society has, has become diverse and we've moved from the patriarchal nature of doing things as a society. And important to note that women today are now empowered about how they are empowered academically. And they have, uh, of course, if you're empowered academically, you get to gauge your full potential. You know your potential in something. Some, we have ladies who are engineers, we have ladies who are, who are pilots. 
So we really shouldn't resolve this question of gender equality to only women. Remember, uh, gender equality is twofold in that it's a, you are either male or female. So the gender equality in that there has to be has to be understood in such a way in that now even if there are opportunities that have been there, the government programs, the the Uganda National Youth, Youth Livelihood Program, even if those things were taken away from uh, taken away from the picture, women would still have an equal standing with men in that society. Society now has moved from the patriarchal way of doing things to it is now diverse. That is my understanding. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was Ronald. Uh, thank you to the panelists. Now, if you have any questions and you would like to ask another panelist, feel free to raise your hand and we'll be able to ask you. Or if you have a response or a, an information to give or counter react to a submission. Okay, uh, I can see Ronald's hand is up. Okay, so Ronald, you can submit. And after that, we'll have Rachel. Yes, my questions would go to, uh, to our panelist, uh, Ms. Namudu Silvia, who earlier hinted on a point that our laws are not working, that, that why these opportunities have not been, have not achieved gender equality, that our laws have not been working. But then how can we make our laws work? Because we have a legal framework. Uh, in my opinion, I believe we have a legal framework and we, there, are, there, are, there has been sensitization. Sensitization has been in place. We have civil society organizations that have made people understand the nature of our laws. And remember, in that even the drafting of these laws, we had a constitutional commission that solicited views from the people. So I'm, I'm having trouble getting on how our laws have failed to work, yet these laws reflect the social contract between the people and the state. Thank you. Okay, so that question is to Sylvia. I can see Sylvia's hand is up. So Sylvia, you can respond to that and also ask your question. Uh, thank you very much, Ronald. We've seen torture happening in Uganda, right? But don't we have laws against torture? So I think what you can do about the laws that are not working is to do something, write proposals, run hashtags as small as a hashtag on Twitter. It's a hashtag like break the bias. You all heard when police, uh, the police spokesperson Enanga said that adultery is not a crime in Uganda. It was the gentlemen that were really happy about it. Did any of you try to run any hashtags? Did you try to talk to your fellow men that you know what, however much the spokesperson is doing, is saying this adultery is not fine. Uh, rape in marriage, we, the, some laws, like I said, the laws that are working, some of them are working for those ones that can put in some money. But let's think of a woman in the village digging without any money. How are the laws going to help them? When, when they go to the police, they ask them for money. The laws, uh, we can help in working of the, in the laws working by putting pressure on the law enforcers. Like I said, the small things like hashtags on Twitter, writing different letters to newspapers. Those are the small things we as citizens can do right now. We can do something, however small it can be, for these laws to work. And let's also advocate for people knowing the laws. Let's advocate for acts being written in local languages. Let's say an act in Luganda that uh, the, sec the Health and Safety Act in Luganda, one in Renyakore, another one in Acholi, so that other people, those people that we consider that are deep in the villages can, can learn about the law that governs them instead of having only laws mostly in English. Thank you. Okay, so Sylvia has responded. Let us have okay. Rachel. Sylvia, do you have a question to ask? I, I will ask them something on what Arthur said that given that women are intelligent, they have the, almost the same, they have almost the same physique with men, but you know, nature endowed us differently. Nature provides that we give birth, we, car we carry children for nine months. We are definitely not going to be on the same setting with you. That's why we need something that ever protects us because we have monthly periods, we have 
those nine months of caring children, we have those months uh, after giving birth for taking care of your children, definitely men and women are not the same. That's why we are advocating for equality because nature to some extent is not fair to women. That's why we as people need to come out and be fair to women. We don't have the same, almost the same physique. We have many things that go, go in, go through women. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Let us have Rachel. I can see her hand is up. Okay. Um. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like you to reply a little about what you asked. Uh, the previous question you asked Ronald and Arthur of removing the structures of women that are there. Like, would the equality still be there? I would like to put light on that, on that, but I would like you to first pardon what you really ask them. Okay, the, the question was that if we are to take away all the opportunities that have been given to women under the law, and we take away affirmative action, will women still be able to stand at equal footing with men? Okay, thank you so much. So. Uh, when uh, my fellow colleague on the panel uh, was answering, that is Ronald, he said, uh, yes, they would still be on an equal footing with men, but then I'm saying, no, it wouldn't be equal at all. Imagine a case in point where the 30, 30 to 35% of the myogas is removed from women, a case in point where that one, uh, point of the form six results is removed from women a case in point where the the a case in point where women uh a case in point where the, that that opportunity of uh, at least a woman mp being given an opportunity in parliament is women i, I mean is given would we actually still be having the same position as men the case is actually no so that is what i wanted to actually bring at to us uh, because that has helped us reach where we are in terms of equality. But then if, if uh, my fellow colleague comes out on the panel and says, if they are removed, they would still be on the same footing. I do not agree with that. That is what I wanted to put in light. Okay, thank you, Ruth. I can see um, Arthur's hand is up, Ronald's hand is up. Let me start with, with Ronald, then last week. Please keep it short, we have run out of time. Yes, in rejoinder, I would like to object to what uh, Ruth just said before I proceed to my main question or my main opinion. Uh, Ruth is saying that, uh, our panelist, Ms. Ruth is saying that if these opportunities that have been put in place, if they are removed, uh, ladies will not be on the same footing. But then you realize that you're proceeding to a fact that ladies are now uh, given uh, sort of favored. Now, what you realize that that, that being favored, uh, us men, we are being sidelined. I don't know. I, I don't know if she's seeing the the logic there. Now, if we cannot create a fair playground, then meaning what we are having one gender that is the female gender that is being favored, being given opportunities, opportunities like the one point five mark that is added to their to their to their level marks now that in, in and of itself is lifting one uh, one gender then leaving the other side line then uh, slivia uh, if i proceed to madame slivia's uh, op opinion that the spokesperson of police say that adultery is not a crime i would like to as a lawyer as a lawyer in making I believe the spokesperson of police is entitled to their opinion. That opinion has not been, it shouldn't even be debat debatable because if we still have that crime crime in our penal court, then meaning that is a crime. If one is prosecuted, if you're taken to courts of law, because we, if, a man, if a man is taken to courts of law because he has committed adultery, that person is prosecuted. Those are just opinions of, of, of the spokesperson of police Maybe we would have debated that if it was brought before the floor of parliament. So I would like to I would like to advise my fellow panelists to distance from such an opinion because 
each and of, each each one of us is entitled to their op own opinion. Thank you. Okay. Let's have as a last and then we go to our closing remarks. Yes, Kaza. Yes, uh, I'm trying to respond to Sylvia, who said that uh, men and women cannot stand on the same equal footing, basing on what they bear physically and mentally. Uh, as I say right now, uh, Madam Moderator, you're holding this debate because you're intelligent, meaning that uh, it's not always that the strongest person is always at the top. Today we see that the most richest uh, people, I mean the richest people, are not generally the strongest, but they have the mental capacity to uplift themselves. So as I have said that uh, women can still stand on the same equal footing with men because they are mentally intelligent. Uh, today we see that we one has to work smart rather than being uh, w working with a lot of energy, a little bit of intelligence to what you're doing and you perfect that because you're intelligent. So I get women basing on their intelligence. And if at all we, we, we see that women have, have influenced very many things in the country, we cannot say that women can be cannot stand on the same equal footing because um, they are not physically as strong like the men. And uh, I think that uh, I, we, get, we still get women basing on their mental capacity that they are strong women and they can influence very many things and they can cause a, a great impact. Hence, they can stand on the same equal footing with the men. Okay. Thank you so much to all the debaters. We have come to the end of our debate for today. I would like to appreciate everybody who was able to participate in the debate. But before we leave, I would like to give the panelists an opportunity to give us their closing remarks. And I will start right with Sylvia. Thank you very much. Um, about this debate, uh, I think some women, some women are also not yet ready for gender equality because they think by changing certain behaviors about them or certain things about their bodies, they're going to influence men to like them or to get certain jobs. Like I've had some women who bleach because they want to get jobs on televisions, which is not good. And also we still have the influence of local marriage counselors, like so-called the locally known as singers that tell women to be submissive, that tell them to do everything in their power to impress men, which is not good. They should do everything in their power to impress the environment they are in, not rather to impress their spouses in things that don't even benefit them, neither the country. Like I've been talking in the recent, uh, my, recent my, my recent speech that as we are fighting for as we are fighting gender inequality, we want gender equality, but let's not deviate, go to gender dominance, because in the end, we want equality, not one gender to dominate the other. And also what uh, Ronald said about that uh, as a legal scholar, we should consider as long as we have adultery as a crime in, in our laws, but let's talk of the women back there because they are the women we, we, we want to empower right now. We, want a, we are talking about a woman who doesn't know that even courts are available for them. Now, if a spokesperson comes out and says such a thing, they will lose their morale. As I'm saying, let's fix our system because it is a system that affects the people that, are, that do not understand the laws as we do. It is not about us. It is, it is about those people that are there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvia. Let us also hear from Ronald. Hello. My closing remarks in regard to our topic today is that first and foremost, we need to appreciate the strategies that have been put forward by the government. That is through the legal framework, the laws, the laws that have been put in place by our parliament. And these, these frameworks have uplifted, have uplifted the, the, the female gender to an equal standing to the male gender. So the framework that, that is in place, the, program, the programs of government have to be appreciated in that now I believe we are at an equal footing and gender equality has been achieved through the opportunities that have been created here in Uganda. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronald. Let's get also closing remarks from both. 
Ruth, you have the floor. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, in my closing remarks, I would want us to, how about we adopt a world where there is, um, where difference is valued uh, and celebrated. If, if we value difference very well and celebrate it very well, that is how we shall be able to overcome inequality. Uh, how is uh, a case in point of, um, uh, an example, the different examples of uh, the, like ladies passing through uh, a monthly period session, uh, and then uh, producing a baby, having a baby for those nine months. So how about we respect that and value that so that as we are, we want the equality, we see that the, the differences that we have, celebrate them so that we do not sideline and say, Ladies have more. Uh, ladies have more. Ladies have more opportunities, uh, as my colleague did say. Thank you. That's my submission. Thank you so much. Uh, with last but not least, let's have closing remarks from Ata. Yes, my closing remark is that to a larger extent, we have achieved gender equality, and uh, gauging from the pre-colonial times, the post-colonial times, you see that women did not have the same equal footing with men, whereby they were only limited to being housewives back, back in their homes. And the only thing they could control at home were only home affairs, and they could not indulge themselves in so much of the political work. But we see that after independence, after 1962, um, women came up on board. I mean, the government tried to bring the women on board to indulge them in different activities. We've talked about Article 40, that talks about uh, economic rights that uh, encompasses both male and female genders, whereby they can engage in different activities. So we need to appreciate various things that have been put up by the, by the law that tries to uplift both women and men and both the girl child and the boy child. So to a large extent, I, I think we need to appreciate that. Though to a, to a lesser extent, we need to also highlight that uh, women, the rights of women have been abused. And just that uh, even though they have been abused, uh, we need to appreciate that still to a larger extent we, we have been able to achieve it. Thank you. Thank you, Ata. I would like to appreciate all the panelists. We have come to the end of our debate. Uh, today we have been hosting Uganda Matters University on course. And our panelists for today were two gentlemen and ladies, that is, um, Mr. Semuya Baata, Ms. Nalu Kake Rachel Ruth, Ms. Namudu Silvia Chisache, and last but not least, Mr. Ronald Nandukere. Thank you so much for all the research that you did, being very articulate and for representing your university during this internal debate in preparation for inter-university debate at the quarterfinals level. So I would like to also thank so much Center for Constitutional Governance and Civic Space TV for organizing this debate. Um, thank you so much because this is the platform where people come and share ideas. University students are able to put their ideas out there and they are able to debate. And at the end of it, um, the discussion is very informative, educative, as well as argumentative. So thank you so much, Center for Constitutional Governance. And thank you so much to our dear viewers for watching. And feel free to put your comment on the comment section uh, regarding this topic. From me and from the team at CCG and Civic Space TV, we wish you all the best and see you again next week, same time with another university. Bye.